Look over at your neighbor and tell them, we need the fire of God. We need the fire of God. So if you would, Kathy, put up Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 29. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29. We've been talking about the power of His presence. Everybody say, His power. When we talk about fire, there is a release of energy. There is a release of power whenever fire is present. Amen. Energy is being released. Something is being consumed. And so whenever we look at Hebrews B, verse 29, get me 20 more verses on there and we'll be there. Last one in the chapter. Amen. Verse 29, just a absolute, just in your face, this is who He is. How many of y'all know God... We have a, 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 an array, a vast array of word pictures that tells us who God is. How many of y'all know He's love, He's light, He's life, He's truth? It's not what He does, it's who He is. Now let's read this one out here because we've been talking about the presence of God. So here's another picture that we need to talk about and expound on a little bit further from last week. We use this as our baseline. We're going to build on it again this week, probably a little bit more next week as well. Last week we talked about the refining fire of God. How many of y'all have had God deal with you about things in your life that you needed to, huh? have burned out, a little purifying process going on, maybe a big cleansing process going on. That just means you're like everybody else. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short. We have a tendency to slump and fall back into some of the things God's delivered us out of. We need the fire of God to continually cleanse our heart and check our motives. Anybody say amen? amen. This is who our God is. Our God. Your daddy and my daddy, sister, huh, is a consuming fire. Everybody say he is? A consuming fire. No debate, no answer, so it's up to us to understand that. When I get into the presence of God, how is it, and this was a question we asked last week, how is it that I can get into the presence of a consuming fire and not be touched by that fire? Hmm? I hear people say all the time, well, I've been in the presence of God. You ought to be toasty then. You ought to at least be smoking. Huh? Hot! Right? We talked about that last week. There should be a transfer of that fire. How many of y'all, that's what the day of Pentecost was about, right? The day of Pentecost is about a transfer of fire. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 says, But you'll receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. We talked about the refining fire last week. We talked about some, a little bit, the conquering fire of God that goes before us, right? Deals with the giants in the land. I'm going to send you to a land where the, the giants, the, the children of Anak, right? They're there, they're bigger than you are, they're mightier than you are, but they're not mightier than me and I'm in you. Powerful word of encouragement, amen. So the refining fire of God, the conquering fire of God, we're going to talk about the empowering. Everybody say empowered. You will receive power after that. That the Holy Ghost has come upon you, the Holy Spirit. Whenever you read in the King James or whatever version, if you read ghost or spirit, it's the same Greek word, pneuma. Literally means the breath of God. When God breathes on you, there's a fire from the presence of God. One aspect. Our God is a consuming fire. Now let's go to, let's go to Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. Again, we're just kind of backtracking just a little bit, getting back on. How many of y'all know who you are? See. There's several word pictures of who we are. Scripture paints it out. We're more than conquerors. We're kings. We're priests. But it also says that we're to present ourselves as living sacrifices. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Last week we talked about the Old Testament. It's full of dead sacrifices, right? Dead sacrifices. God is the God of the living, not of the dead. He wants you to be a living sacrifice. Everybody say sacrifice. Now let me tell you, there's a line in John Maxwell's leadership teaching. He teaches one of the, in the 21 laws of leadership, John Maxwell teaches one of the laws called the law of sacrifice. The law of sacrifice, he says this line right here, he said it's not really a sacrifice if it don't cost you something. It's not really a sacrifice if it don't cost you something. What I have found out that some of the times, <clears throat> the plan of God costs me more than I want to spend sometimes. Huh? Huh? See, I, I've got a plan for my life. How many of y'all ever had a dream, right? You come out and, and as kids, at least in America, man, the American dream. And my mom and dad, they were encouragers. I had wonderful parents. 
And mom would, she called me Sonny, and she'd say, Sonny, don't be afraid to dream a dream. Don't be afraid. And so I had these dreams. You know, I can remember playing baseball, me and Tiny. And I had dreams at one time. Tiny maybe get to go to college, and we had a scholarship. And all that never, it, it didn't materialize. But I had a dream. And then I got around some influences that wasn't so good, and I found out that hell had a dream for me. You got a plan for your life. Hell's got a plan for your life. Now, let me ask you this. Now, listen to me, Christian. And let's be real right here. This is the day we're going to get real. I'm going to ask you three more questions here just in a moment. How many of y'all believe that God has a plan for your life? And, and, and so often what the problem is, is I'm pursuing my plan or my dream, and I even spent some time pursuing hell's plan. That was a dead-end road with the bridges out. and huh? Woo, thank God. Never left anything down there that I needed. I'm not going back. Anybody say amen? Hmm? God's got a plan. So this week and next week, we're going to look at some, some lives that were transformed by the fire of God. Now, we talked about this sacrifice last week. Present your bodies, a living sacrifice. So the sacrifice, here, here's the entire intention of the Old Testament sacrifice, which is to give us a picture of the New Testament sacrifice that sacrifice is intended to be consumed by fire. Right? Simple enough. It is offered unto God. It cost them a lamb, a goat, a bull. It cost something. And as a matter of fact, whenever you were offering the Passover lamb, right? Passover for the Jews. How many of y'all know you didn't get to bring in the one that was limping? Huh? One that's blemished. You give your what to God? You gave your best. You offer your best to God. I'm going to, now listen, this is important because the questions that I'm getting ready to ask are to be introspective. Nobody needs to look around. This is where you look in, in your own heart and in your own life. I believe that at some time, see, see, fire is such a universal thing. We are so used to having fire in all kinds of forms around us. We've become so comfortable around it, so complacent around it, we just expect it to be there. How many of y'all drove to church today in an automobile that had some fire in it. It's called a, uh, an internal combustion engine. Whether it's gas or diesel powered, right, with the right mixtures under controlled burn, right, that gasoline being introduced to that spark, that spark igniting it, driving that piston button down, and you were able to come to church. Too much gas and too much spark and you go to heaven, right? All right, you're with me. You got it. Blow the whole top of her off, man. My dad used to would run a chainsaw in some of these cutting contests, and he would fuel it. He called it Gatorade. He'd be in these logger contests where it was legal. I can tell you this. My dad was a stickler for legal, but if they hadn't had it outlawed, he would put, and then not Gatorade. It, he run airplane fuel. A little hotter mix. And that chainsaw went from a a loud scream to like a jet engine scream. And it's, yes, yes, yes. And it, that's it. Three cuts and it's done. It's, what? Well, you're already done. Not possible. Yeah, it is with airplane fuel. The sacrifice is fuel to the fire. And that's who we are. What I have learned about fire, I brought some matches to play with, to share with. I didn't know this. Did ha, have any of you science nerd? I mean, science people watched. I, I understand that there's a show that talks about the production of matches. And did you guys know that there is a fire retardant right at the bottom of the match that whenever the match begins to burn, it will go out? Did, I didn't know that either. And so we'll try this. I've experimented with it earlier. It worked. It worked in early service. We can get it to. There we go. Let's see if it works right here. Kids, don't try this at home. Maybe try it. We'll see. Don't make me into a liar. Okay, there it goes. No, nope, no. Nope. Apparently, they didn't get enough fire retardant on this one. So, the wind's blowing. I'm going to... There's the fire retardant. <coughs> I got a fan. Oh, fan and... Everybody say fan in the fire. 
Still got a little bit of ember there. Anybody? Yeah. Anybody see that? Still got a little bit. I wonder if that's like some of your faith. I wonder if that's like some of the fire of God in your life. If our God's a consuming fire, if you've been born again, you've been exposed to fire. You have access to fire. Fire is a pretty common thing. How many of y'all have some of these at home or something similar to that, right? How many of y'all have electricity in your home? Huh? Electricity. I can assure you that there's some fire involved in that. Whenever I'm around fire, whenever I'm around electricity, I respect it a lot. I'm like a super wuss whenever it comes to electricity. I don't just turn the breaker off. Marshall said, we've got a switch that's going bad, honey. Could you fix it? Sure. You bet, baby. No problem with the electricity. Why don't you run on to town and get us some 7 Upper Dr. Pepper or whatever, and I'll take care of this electrical problem at our house. I, she's gone. You see, I want to, you know, keep my ego intact. And that I don't know if she had. I'm pretty sure she don't have that image. But anyway, so she goes. I don't just turn the breaker off. I turn the main off. I go out to the pole and I shut the pole off. And if I could unhook the transformer, I would. I've seen the effects of electricity. I've seen it come out of the heavens and what it's done to some of my cows. Hmm. Had a neighbor that lost eight head the other day in this electrical storm. We had one of our little boys that grew up in this church, um, Derek Skinner, uh, Mishana's son, was working. He's, he, he lives out in Nevada now, part of our youth group years and years ago, and he's grown up and he's, he's doing electrical work. Thank God his arm was bent. He touched two hot wire, or touched a hot wire together, and I guess a ground or whatever wasn't supposed to be, and the electricity, and it, it, they showed me pictures of it, burned his arm horribly and out his elbow. And what they said is if his arm would have been straight, it wouldn't have run out his elbow, it would have run right to his heart. Hmm. I would suggest to you that fire is to be respected. See, what, what happens is whenever we get enough fire going, if we, if we get this thing going, I'm confident that fire, even if it's a little fire, see, we're going to do this again. Come on, baby. All right, now we're going to, see, this is what was supposed to happen the first time. It's not going to, if that one does what it's supposed to, let me hold it down here. It's not going to be too long before, I can feel that right now. Now, it's not uncomfortable, but I think I'm going to start tipping it just a little bit. It's about to get to the end. Huh? See, what happens when fire gets close enough, and I'm going to make a point here. When fire gets close enough, it becomes uncomfortable. My flesh is uncomfortable around live fire, whether it's a match or God. Anybody say amen? It's a real good opportunity. So here's the three questions. Our God, who is a consuming fire, what have you done with the fire of God in your life in the past? When I look back and I see where God... See, I didn't start out as a preacher. I started out as a preacher's kid. And there wasn't a whole lot about church that I liked other than her. I loved youth group when she came. Good Lord, pray for those counselors in two weeks. You have no raging hormones. How do we ever get the work? Anyway, another story. Right? But I got exposed... To the fire of God. I can look in, in times past in my life when the Spirit of God, and, and let's look at Acts chapter 2, if you would, Kathy, turn us to Acts chapter 2 and verses. We'll start at, uh, uh, let's go ahead and start at verse 1. We'll read four verses. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. First question What have you done with the fire of God in your past? The, 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 the scripture teaches us about the Spirit of God and these cloven tongues of fire that on the day of Pentecost, right? We're going to read to that just in a moment. That these tongues of fire, which I believe is a visual effect that God allowed people to see of what was going on in the spiritual realm, come and it sets down upon these believers who were gathered together in the upper room, right? He told them, he said, listen, don't you leave Jerusalem 
You tarry there, you seek, you look until you be endued with power. There was a timing thing involved with them moving forward with the fire of God. And so we have these ordinary fishermen. Let's talk about Peter and John for a moment. Just prior to this, before Jesus' crucifixion, John's mama is trying to get... Uh, Jesus talked into letting John sit on one hand or the other, and his brother sat on the other hand, right? How spiritual is that? self-promotion and all of that whole kind of thing and I got my mama to try and squeeze the master on that one there and Peter is over here he's denying the Lord three times he's cursing Um, the point being is the fire of God changed these men they were fishermen they became followers and then they became fishers of men because of the presence of the power of God that changed and transformed their lives they got exposed to fire and began to be consumed by that fire what have you done with the power of God? I've quenched the Spirit of God in times past. How about you? Spirit of God saying, hey, why don't you say something? Why don't you do something? But because it was out of my comfort zone. The fire of God trying to move me, but my flesh is uncomfortable with the fire of God. huh? My flesh is uncomfortable with the fire of God, and so I just didn't really want to do that. It was not very convenient, and I wasn't willing to pay the price and make the sacrifice. Anybody say amen? Huh? Not a message of condemnation, it's just a reality we need to look in. What have you done with the fire of God in your life? What are you doing with the fire of God in your life today? And what are you going to do with what's to come? God's got a plan for your life. What are you going to do with the fire? Because you can't do it on your own. You can't stand against this darkness. Last week we talked about fighting fire with fire. You can't defeat this enemy in and of your own strength. We will have to have, it is required, the fire of God which comes through the form of the Holy Spirit. Read with me. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, God's timing issue right there. Where were they? They were all in one place, in one accord. Hmm? Let me get to where it's at. I've got a whole bunch more. that I just saved you about 30 minutes right there while I was punching through, just so you know that. They were in one place and one accord. Everybody say, gather together. Uh, I'm praying for the Holy Ghost and fire to show up at camp. Amen. Verse 2, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Everybody say, suddenly. That explosive fire that Dave was talking about when fire... Huh? Is exp- when gunpowder explo- is exposed to fire, right? Woo! But if your powder's wet, hmm? they look over at your neighbor and tell them, keep your powder dry, right? Keep your powder dry. Mighty wind, it filled all the house where they're sitting. Verse 3, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as. Everybody say like as. Didn't say it was fire, it was like fire. This is spirit's fire. And when the fire of the Spirit begins to burn in your life, God has a plan. He's executing His plan for your life because His plan cannot be executed in your own power. What happens when fire, when fire, it it has to have fuel. It has to have something to consume. And this is what I'm confident of today. You, You grade yourself. You look in. I am confident that there are some of you who is fire is maybe gone out. There are some of you whose fire is waned and it may be down to a glow. There's fire available everywhere. Anybody have any problem getting a hold of natural fire in one shape, form, or another? No problem. It's everywhere. We have become so complacent because it's everywhere. And we just think that the, that the power of God ought to do this. But what happens is when we're in the problem, when we're in the crisis, we use God like a spare Oh, God, we've got this problem. Fire from heaven. It's amazing how improved our prayer life is when we have a major crisis. Anybody say amen? And I'm not dissing that in any way, shape, or form. Thank God if we've been using him like a spare tire, he's still there to come along and get us on down the road. But how many of y'all know he needs to be more than just that fifth wheel back there in the trunk? We ought to challenge ourselves. Lord God, I believe, Pauline, that I'm going to stand before God and give account for what I did with the fire of God. What'd you do with my fire? Well, I showed up at church. Whoa, wow, good for you. Woo! You got there. Well, that's more than some. What'd you do when you got there? Ah. 
I mean, I'll think if we're going to give God our best, it ought to look like our best. It ought to sound like, listen, it's not a message of condemnation. If we're going to pray it, if we're going to talk it, huh? the Lord's Prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Here's the one. You just sung it this morning, but was it real or was it just a song? Was it just words? God, I want your will to be done here on this earth, in this place. Your will be done in me, God, like it is in heaven. When God says something in heaven, I mean, I don't know, the angels step to and they go at it. How is it that the angels can step to and we have a little trouble sometimes of stepping back? I'm uncomfortable with fire. I'll be honest with you. I'm uncomfortable with being a sacrifice sometimes because it costs me. If it's convenient. I watched the community come out and I've grown, I've grown up watching this community do this. I can remember benefits from my earliest childhood. I watched a, a, a large crowd of our community, our neighbors, meet down at the local fire department huh? last night and almost $27,000 raised for a family. Right, Doug and Christine, pastors out at Blue. Yep, right. The number I got this morning was 26,600 and change. There were sacrifices involved in that. People gave. They were just like the rest of us, common, ordinary people. Didn't give out of the overflow or out of all the extra, out of all that. They gave because they believe that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And so we'll sow and we'll give. And we're going to trust God with the increase on all of those things. What have you done with the fire of God? Could you have, listen, could you have done better? Should we have done better? Again, it's not about condemnation. It's about, okay, I can look back in the past and I can learn from that. Now what am I going to do with it? What am I going to do with it? What am I doing with it now? And looking down the road. Uh... Marsha and I are in a transition period. I've, we've talked about this before. And we are literally looking. Uh, see my plan? Our family's plan. We've, we've got a farm. We've got cattle. We've got kids. We've got grandkids. I have a dream about that farm with some of those kids and grandkids around out there. And I believe that God's involved in some of it. But I see us playing less and less of a role. Letting go of some of those things so we can move on with some of the other things that God has for us. And I'm confident of that. She's confident of that. And so what we're doing now, it's not a matter of if we're going to do it. It's a matter of when we do it and how we do it. We're seeking God in those capacities right now. God, what do we do here? When do we do this right here? Because I do not want to, I want to be faithful to the fire that you've put in my heart. We need, if there was ever a time that our world needed Christians ignited and going out and being initiators, it is this time right now in America. We need godly fire in America. And that's you. That's you. Here's another declaration in Scripture. Here's what James says. He said, your tongue's a fire. Huh? James chapter 3, your tongue's a fire. We won't have time to read it today, but if you read, we will. We're going to close with this. Change my mind. Matthew chapter 3. Go there, i got to punch that one in. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. I read it in early service. I knew we'd be running a little bit closer and we're done. Marsh, if you want to come, please. See anybody you want to burn on the way up here? Some matches, baby. I said that out loud, didn't I? I said, I'm just thinking that stuff sometimes. Huh? What are you going to do? There's your match, Pauline. What are you going to do with that? Hey, that's a real. You going to set the world on fire? Would you do that? Fire God. See, just a little representation. How about it, Joe? You want a match? How about it? anybody want a match? What are you going to do with it? You got fire. What are you going to do with it? See? What are you going to do with it? You going to do something for God? Are you going to say, huh? What are you going to do with it? I think our young folks could even do something with some fire, huh? <laughs> Woo, we're handing it off right there. I was concerned about that. Obviously, you can't be trusted with fire yet. We're just going to leave that one be. But he can grow. Amen. Now listen, let's read this together, and, and uh, we're going to come back to it next week. Next week, here's your little bit of a homework assignment. Next week, we're going to talk about the illuminating power or the illuminating fire. It's the enlightening we live in a world that's calling good evil and evil good. 
Paul prays a prayer. It says, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that we might know, that we might understand, that it might, right? If there's ever a time, hmm, if there's ever a time our world needed the understanding, the true understanding of the fire and the power, the revelation of who God is, it's now. God, you're a fire. I'm a living sacrifice. Consume me. Consume me. I don't want to be fire retardant. If anything, I want to accelerate forward into this life. John the Baptist talks about, see this, this prophesied man of God, Isaiah prophesies him. This man that God has a plan for his life, six months older than Jesus. And when his mama, Elizabeth, hears from Mary that she's pregnant with Messiah, John the Baptist, this little baby in the womb. How many of y'all know that speaks to volumes, to some things that are to, This baby in the womb, filled with the Spirit and leaps when touched by that fire of God. Don't tell me that that, that fetus doesn't feel. Don't you buy into and don't you try to compromise. Don't you believe the lie. You just crank up the fire. Mm -hmm. Don't you apologize for being right, Christian. Love, but speak truth. John, he is of a, he is of a group that are more separatists. The Essenes, they have... They've pulled themselves away from society. They've pulled themselves away from the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They see the corruption that's going on into the world. But yet then God calls him in the wilderness to begin to preach a message. And people start coming to him. Why would people leave their jobs? Why would people leave their city to go out into the wilderness to hear a preacher, right? It must have been something drawing. Something drawing. It amazes me how people are drawn to fire sometimes. You build a campfire. It's amazing to see how people just want to come around. There's something soothing. We have a little fire pit in our front yard. Love it. I have burned so many hot dogs there. Burnt offerings, right? In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah. Everybody say God's plan. See, God had a plan for Isaiah, and God has a plan for you. Isaiah may not have called you out by name, but God knows you by name. He has a plan for you. What are you going to do with that? You'll need the fire of God to walk in that plan. What are you doing with the fire of God? You letting it burn out, go out? Are you adding wood to it? Put a little fuel on the fire. It's the voice of one crying in the wilderness. This is before Jesus comes. First advent. How many of y'all know He's coming back? He's been here once. He's coming back. How many of y'all know the message is still the same for us who are crying before He comes the second time? Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Get ready. He's coming back. There's a lot of the world going to throw that right back in your face. They're going to give you the thumbs down. They're going to give you, didn't like it. It's all right, you keep on preaching, you keep on walking in the fire. Plan of God for your life. Prepare the way of the Lord, make His path straight. The same John had his raiment of camel's hair, a leather girdle. I've been thinking about coming dressed like John one day. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. No, you don't want, no, I just don't even go there. Leave it be. Boy, it's running wild right now. I'm just trying to pull it back in. His meat was locust and wild honey. Didn't see anything in there about Twinkies. Now, go. Heart wrenching. Then went out to him, Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region round about the Jordan. They were baptized of him, confessing their sin. When he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to his baptism. You want to talk about a little fire? Listen to his words. Everybody say, My tongue is a fire. It's 
what James says. Now, you read it in James 3. We won't have time today to go there. We'll get there. My tongue's a fire. How many of y'all ever set anything off ablazing with that tongue you wish you had enough? I'm not needing information. I know the answer to that one. Huh? Why did I not just use the filter? I knew better than that. I've got a filter between my brain and my mouth, but I just bypassed it and said it anyway. And now I've got a bunch of putting out fire. Yeah. Well, if it can be a fire that is destructive, how many of you know it can be a fire that is constructive? Hmm? With that same tongue, James says it can either be bitter or it can be sweet. Your tongue's a fire. What have you done with it? What are you doing with it? What are you going to do with it? You generation of vipers. What a warm welcome to church. I'm out here baptizing on the side of the river. Come! Come and be baptized. Confess your sins. I'll baptize you. I'll immerse you. Your sins will be washed. Oh, you bunch of snakes. Who told you you could come? You need to bring fruit. Of repentance. You bunch of serpents. Such a loving, warm embrace from the man of God. All right? Fire. Bring forth fruit. Verse 8. Meet for repentance. Verse 9. Think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Now also listen to this. The axe is laid into the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which brings forth not good fruit, right, is hewn down and what? Cast in fire. See, that's a fire of judgment. It's a fire of judgment for the believer and the unbeliever. We live in a time where uh, I'm not convinced that even church people believe in hellfire. Um, does it bother you that your neighbor might be going to hell? I'm just asking a question. It's something that we need to consider. What do you do with the fire of God? Because hell's accustomed to fire as well. Hmm? Psalms chapter 1 says that we are like trees planted by the rivers of water, right? Rivers of living water. Psalm 1. We're like trees planted by. And so whenever, whenever. <laughs> Whenever this is begin to be spoken right here, he said, let me tell you what, we're laying the axe to every tree. I mean, I know, there is a time of judgment that's coming. It, it, it reminds us of John 15. I'm, I'm the vine, you're the branches, and every branch in me that bears not fruit, what happens? Cut it and cast it into the fire. Fire of judgment. Another day. Now listen to this. Verse 11, and this is it. Stand to your feet. Read this one here with me. Let's read this one here. This is John John preaching, John's words speaking right here, just as Jesus comes. Let's read verse 11 together. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Everybody say fire. This baptism in fire. Baptism in fire. We're going to build on this some next week. To be immersed. Does that sound like a living sacrifice that is consumed by fire? But it's not a fire. Listen to me. It's not a fire to destroy you. It is a fire to empower you to be who God planned on you being. Not necessarily your plan. Definitely not hell's plan. But God's plan. Best plan for my life. 30 plus years ago, I can tell you my plan was not to be preaching to you. I was raised in a preacher's home. Lived my childhood in the fishbowl of church and everybody else looking in. And it was the last thing on the face of this earth that I wanted. I thought. Now I'm trying to figure out how I can get rid of some of this stuff so I can do more of this. The things I once hated... I now love. Pauline, thank you for quoting the word. And the things that I once loved are not too important anymore. Father God, we bow before you. Let's do that. Let's bow before God.
God, we bow before you. For those whose fire has gone out. For those whose fire has perhaps diminished. God, would you reignite. Rekindle the fire of your Holy Spirit. In the heart and in the life. Your intention for us is not for us to walk a passionless, fireless, weak religion, but to have a relationship with you that is full of life and full of passion and full of fire and is exciting. Walking with you and sharing truth, seeing people set free, fighting the good fight, running the good race. Your fire burning in our heart, in our spirit, in our minds. We are fuel, living sacrifices to your holy fire. And where we go, your fire goes with us. Make our mouths a fire for you. Make our hands a fire for you. Our hearts a fire for you. Our feet a fire for you, Lord God. May we share we shared these matches we passed out so there is the potential for fire fire Lord God we speak that and we declare that over each one that's here over each one that's watching so let's be real honest now here's inventory time hmm I'm not going to call your name if you want to come up for prayer you can let's just let's just be real right here let me say, listen, I'll just tell you, be honest with you, DL, fire's not what it should be. I'm not as hot for God as I used to be. I'm not where I was, but I realize I need to be. Help me, Jesus. Hmm? No shame in that. I've been there. Hmm? Anybody else been there? Huh? Hey, let's do this. How many of y'all have been there before where we're talking about? Let me see your hands. All of us been there. I've been there. Fire's waned out. Fire's burned down. Haven't been fueled. I've been distracted. I've been, huh? All those things. Now, so there's the honest, pretty well everyone in this building. How many just simply say, hey, DL, fire's not as hot as it was. I need it turned up. I'm going to seek that. Let me see your hand. Huh? Right? Good, good. Love the, I love your honesty. Thank you. Thank you. Now listen, here's, where, here, here's how you catch fire. You make sure you sit, get yourself in the presence of God who is fire. Huh? And you go with that right heart. You go with the intention. Listen, I'm, I'm not leaving there until I've got fire in my bones again. Fire in my heart and fire in my spirit. Hmm? Anybody here that's never known the fire of God? Anybody that's watching that hadn't known the fire of God? You've never known power like that in your life. Radically transform. Radically change. Fire of God. Let's pray. We're done right here. Father God, we love you. What a precious thing. And sometimes what an uncomfortable thing to our flesh. But that's okay. You're more concerned about our, our obedience than you are our comfort. You have a plan for our life. And that plan requires your plan requires the fire of God. Lord God, I, I just intend to uh, try to burn hotter and brighter. That's where we're moving. Intentional about that. We speak that over each one. God, I want to be a preacher that preaches with fire. I want to be a preacher that prays with fire. I want to be a part of a congregation where not just the pulpit's on fire, but the pews are on fire, Lord God. That's the kind, I want to go to that church, Lord God. I want to be that church, Lord God, in a community that's on fire for God. We need America to be on fire for God. And that happens when one after another after another 
after another. And in the Spirit, if we could see like it was on the day of Pentecost, 120 gathered and fire on top of every one of them. Lord God, it looked like a blaze. We pray for the blaze, for the fire of your Holy Spirit in this place, Lord God, in our lives, in our church, in our community, in our homes. Go with us and fire our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone agreed, said amen. Everybody look over at your neighbor and tell them, go home and play with matches. Amen. I love you. God bless you. Be dismissed.